Hey everyone, I'm here with Dr. Inch and he's going to tell us about our digital forensics major. Hi Dr. Inch, how are you today? Hi, I'm doing well, thanks. Can I ask you a few questions? Sure, of course. My first question for you is what is your favorite area of research and why? Sure, so one of the neat things about digital forensics is that it's a relatively new field. So there are a lot of um, interesting research questions that can be asked and it's easy to engage students in really accessible research that's actually, that it matters, right? So they can actually produce a result that someone's gonna care about. So a couple things that have happened recently, I had two students do ERSCA projects, which were very exciting. And one was about security and privacy related to the Amazon Alexa which is kind of interesting. And then I had another student use uh, what we call OSINT, which is open source intelligence, which means she looks stuff up on the internet. And she was able to track uh, some shoplifters and actually track them back to their houses, learn their names, figure out what school they went to. I mean, pretty, pretty amazing results, all from information that was available on the internet for free. So that was kind of cool. And as far as my research, I, I'm kind of interested in a lot of things. Uh, one of the last things I did was a study on uh, what are called data hiding apps. So many parents know that there are these apps in the App Store for Android and Apple that your teenager could go download and they allow the teenager to hide files, maybe pictures from their parents. And so I was curious how effective those were at really hiding the evidence. Now, they're relatively effective at hiding it from parents. I was curious whether they would be effective hiding it from a forensics professional. So I analyzed uh, four pretty popular app data hiding apps and uh, presented the results at a conference and uh, it was pretty fun. So it was kind of an interesting little research project and uh, the good news for us was that forensics was able to identify all the underlying data that the, the data hiding apps were good enough to hide it from parents but not good enough to hide it from professionals. So that was good. That's really interesting. Um, my second question is, what are some interesting careers that some of our digital forensic students um, has, have pursued? Sure, so we have uh, a lot of graduates in a lot of different areas. So digital forensics and cybersecurity encompasses a really broad set of jobs. So we have people working for law enforcement, analyzing computers, and you know putting bad guys in jail. That's a, a pretty common uh, career. We have people um, investigating hacking events. So a company gets hacked, there's a large breach, everyone's data is compromised, you read about these in the paper all the time. So we have graduates that are the people that get called when that happens, they come in and investigate. And the company typically wants to know things like, you know, how did they get in? How long have they been in our network? What did they see? Did they take anything? And how do we stop it from happening again? So those are the questions that an incident response person would answer. And then we've got people working for military intelligence um, who are really you know, helping in the war on terror, making sure that um, we seize data and are able to interpret it quickly so that bad things don't happen to all of us. So for instance, when Osama bin Laden was shot, um, they seized all of his electronic uh, evidence, you know, his computer, his laptop, his cell phone, and all those things got shipped to a lab in uh, Washington, D.C. Several of our graduates work in that lab and they were actually able to analyze that data and turn it around to give the military usable intelligence, so. Very cool. Um, what would you say your favorite class is to teach at BU? Sure. Um, we have a class called 417, which is Advanced Topics in Digital Forensics. So what I like about that is it's our capstone course. So it encompasses theoretically everything they've learned in all the other classes and kind of rolls it all into one, one ball. And what we do in there is we try to mimic the real world as much as we can. So I give them a, a forensics image of a piece of evidence. They then analyze that using the tools and techniques that we've taught them over all their years here. They produce an expert report, a written report, and then they have to defend that report in a mock trial setting where I'm the opposing attorney. So it's, it's the most accurate um, kind of representation we can get of what the real world will be like when I get out there and they start doing analysis. So it's a pretty intense course. They don't always love it while they're doing it, I'll be honest. It's, it's a lot of work and it's hard and it's uncomfortable being questioned. But ultimately when they're done, they all are happy that they did it. And we've had numerous graduates tell me, um, I had to go testify for real 
I was really glad that I had gone through a fake process that was like the real one was gonna be. And we can't mimic it perfectly, but just that same tension and nervousness and all those things that they felt in class, it made doing it when they had to do it for real, when it mattered, they, it made that part much easier. So, so that's my favorite class. Um, how can our students get involved outside of the classroom with digital forensics? Yep, so we have a really active student body in, in digital forensics. Our majors really like each other. They like to hang out and they like to be involved in things outside of class. So we have a very active digital forensics club, which meets weekly, uh, routinely has 40, 50 people at it. So I mean, a really good attendance and they invite speakers to come in. They sometimes do projects. Sometimes one person in the group will have done a project and know something about a particular topic and then they'll present it to the rest. And so it's a good way to like just spark interest and get underclassmen interested in, in things they don't know about yet but might want to know about later. And it's a real, it builds camaraderie. I mean, they're really a close group, so it's kind of cool. Uh, we get them involved in conferences. Dr. Polster just took, I think, 30 students or more to a conference in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they just got back from that. We host our own conference called BloomCon every year. We had about 600 attendees last year, which is pretty amazing given that we're only in our third year. So, so there's a lot of opportunity to do things outside of class. The ERSCA projects that I talked about um, earlier is a way to get involved in projects outside of class. So our students are hungry to do this for real. They want hands-on experiences. They want to do this. And so uh, we certainly try to give them as many opportunities as we can. Great. Thank you so much for all of your information. You bet. It was fun. Thanks. Hey Huskies, Dr. Inch is going to show me the Digital Forensics Research Lab, so I'm going to head out and see what it's about.